We're going to use the slinkies drawn on the page to represent our longitudinal and our transverse wave as they're quite easy to understand. Uh, everybody's used a slinky and we understand how they work. The top diagram, diagram A, shows a longitudinal wave. and We know it's longitudinal because the direction of the disturbance, my hand in this case, is parallel to the motion of the wave itself. So you can imagine if I compress my hand in and pull it back out, I create a series of these little compressions in the actual slinky itself that travels from left towards the right. So the velocity of this wave is left to right. Let's label that. So our top wave we've labeled as a longitudinal wave and the velocity is moving from left towards the right. And that's the speed that these little compressions would travel at as they move left to right. Now if we look at the bottom wave, I'm disturbing it up and down but we know that these pulses from experience will also travel left to right. So if the disturbance is perpendicular to the direction of motion, we say that is a transverse wave. Let's label that one. Alright, so we've labeled our longitudinal wave on the top and our transverse wave on the bottom. Now the wavelength is defined as the distance over which the wave repeats itself. It's the length of one complete wave. And in the diagram on the bottom, on our transverse wave, we define it as the distance from trough to trough. It would also be the same as the distance from crest to crest or wherever the wave repeats itself. Now if we look at our longitudinal wave, it repeats itself from maximum compression to maximum compression. So we can refer to these little compressed regions as our troughs or crest for that matter, as long as we're consistent. So there's from one trough of a longitudinal wave or one maximum compression to the other is also the wavelength and it's already labeled for us. But let's put in the symbol. I'm going to label locations where the crests are and where the troughs are using the symbol CR for crest and TR for trough. Now we also need to define the amplitude of the wave. And the amplitude is simply the distance from the equilibrium position of the wave or where the wave would eventually die down to, so the natural position of the slinky. So it's the distance between the equilibrium and either a crest or a trough. We're going to do the transverse wave first because it's the easiest. Okay, so you've seen I've labeled the amplitude of the transverse wave and it's the distance from my dotted red equilibrium line, which is horizontally down the middle of the wave to either the peak of a crest or the bottom of a trough. So those two amplitudes would be the same. It's not from crest all the way down to trough, it's from crest to equilibrium or from trough to equilibrium. Now let's keep that in mind and label the amplitude for the longitudinal wave above. First of all we need to establish where the equilibrium position is. Now here we can see that the equilibrium position is actually halfway in between a crest and a trough. So where the waves are roughly at the halfway point between a crest and a trough would be where they all sort of die down to after the wave is done, after it damps out. So if we do use the same logic above, there's our crest, there's our trough, and halfway in between would be the normal spacing of the slinky. So our equilibrium position would be the halfway point between the crest and the trough. Let's label that now. So you can see I've labeled a couple of locations where there's equilibrium. Halfway between a crest and a trough, I've labeled this dotted line. That would be the natural position of the slinky once the wave has all died out. The natural stretch. Same with over here. Now an amplitude is the distance from this equilibrium line to either a crest or to a trough. So let's label that now and that completes it. Okay. So we see our amplitude is labeled from, from our equilibrium line, this red dotted line, to a trough, or from the equilibrium line to a crest. That's how we label the amplitude on a longitudinal wave, a little bit different. 